Okay, so Hamburg, Germany is known for a lot of things, and one of the main things it's known for is its red light district, otherwise known as the Reeperbahn. And uh, I had the pleasure of checking it out, thanks to a lot of you guys who recommended that I check it out in the first place. So there's a few things that I saw and experienced on the Reeperbahn that completely changed my outlook on Germany. Part of these opinions and things that change might offend or trigger some people, so full warning before we get into this. Make sure you guys subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming from the Hamburg trip people are asking me if I went to the Rathaus if I went to the Speicherstadt and a few other big places and stuff in Hamburg guys 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 absolutely I went to all those places and I have a ton of vlogs coming in the future so make sure you guys subscribe so you guys are the first to see those videos when they drop so let's start with my first impression of the Reeperbahn when I got there now you guys basically kind of saw that in this last video I was introduced to the street by a subscriber and as we were walking down the street everything was very shocking to me I mean you guys know that in American culture, the topic of intercourse or anything that is of a sexual nature, it's very taboo. So it's not something you see all over the place. But in Germany, even outside of the Reeperbahn, you saw a lot of stores and things related to that casually, just everywhere, kind of sprinkled across the city. And I thought that was pretty interesting because that's not something I was used to at all. Now, another interesting thing is as we were walking down the street, I did notice a heightened amount of people that possibly looked like they were partaking in some party activities, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean? So there was that, and the street was a lot dirtier than the other streets and stuff. I think I could imagine why with all of what I just mentioned. There was a police station in the center of the Hapabon, like where all the stuff is going down. Now, a lot of you guys are probably like, okay, James, like, okay, it's the bars, clubs, what else? Well, I mean, it is the hub of prostitution. So down that entire street, right, are various establishments where you you can go in and pay to play, if you know what I mean. Pay to play, all up and down the street. There's one street in particular that I had a very interesting experience, I'll tell you guys a little bit later. It's called Herbertstrasse, and that's actually a street that women and children are not allowed to go on. Very interesting, because people were telling me this, they're like, hey, you should check out that street that women and children are not allowed on at all. Like, they are not allowed at all. They'll get completely kicked out. Only men you have to be 18 and older to enter this area, and it's these two gigantic walls, right? You have the first wall and right behind it is a second wall and you walk through them kind of like a maze and the second you enter the area it's insane so i'll tell you about that in a bit as well anyways when i first got to the Reeperbahn, the first thing we wanted to do was go to the saint pauli vinox mod all right so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we're going to be uh walking up and down the Reeperbahn, looking at everything there's the saint pauli vinox mock penny mock to all the crazy little shop gimmicks and people and then the tanztorm which is what starts off the Reeperbahn, bro it's gonna be really cool i've heard a lot about it and i've walked on it during the day but i've haven't really gotten to fully experience it at night yet. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out. That was absolutely incredible. We went there, there were so many people that were showing out. It's basically more or less a kinky Christmas market, right? So you have Santa Claus dressed up in like a ball and gag and stuff like that. There's a lot of different stands that sell various things, various items from stands that sell eggplant shaped candles, if you know what I mean, to other stands that showed squishable eggplants and also the squishables. <laughs> Anyways, that was, it was crazy. I'm like, bro, what is this? This. There was a stage where they had a live performance and stuff, another stand where they had a lot of food, and I got to try one of the most delicious things I've ever eaten in my entire life. Yeah, so I actually have like a steak rich in here, bro. Uh, first time, I normally they have like Leibkuchen, uh, or like what's it, Leibkuchen Le or whatever, but it's a steak rich I've never seen this before. Sauteed onions, steak, and a rich bro. It's really fucking good. God damn, look at this shit. Let me try the bread. Mm. Bro. Look at this guy. This is what I think of when I think of steak burgers or steak sandwiches. It's this shit right here, bro. Only on the Raperbahn. Only in the Vinox Mark. Only in St. Pauli. Well. Well, 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 well. That's a St. Pauli Vinox mock. 
was super fucking cool. There's so much to see, bro, and so much like really kinky stuff, dude. Uh, Dick-shaped candles and boob stress balls and stuff and, you know, sex ornaments and a lot of delicious food. I actually had a uh, steak burger that was, oh, dude, an actual, it's basically a steak sandwich. And they put an actual piece of steak and a sandwich with sauteed onions. So fucking good, bro. So we're about to go down the rest of the Rayburn Bond and check this shit out. Like I said, I told you guys, man, I'm here, I'm gonna deliver. I, I love it out here so far, it's super dope. Everybody's drunk as fuck off of glue vine or some other shit. And um, a lot of you guys have been recognizing me down here and stuff like that. So shout out to everybody that, that said hi to me and everything. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for welcoming me, me and your city. I appreciate you guys. Uh, we're about to go and uh, check out the rest of the river and see what the hell we can get into. That's actually pretty nice. That's a nice little spot where people like to film and take pictures and stuff of themselves underneath this beautiful, uh, very well decorated Christmassy area. In fact, there's a Christmas tree on the right hand side, a little like uh, light fixture on the top that says St. Pauli, which is really cool. Super, super sick, bro. I love it, man. I'm hype. I'm in a party mood. Let's go, party people. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I walked up and down the Rabobon, I was making Instagram posts telling everybody I was on the Keats doing my thing, and people were like, yo, be careful about filming because it is very dangerous over there. People might try to poke you up a little bit. And I was like, really? And I got a lot of messages about that, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I was very careful, obviously, right? I'm like, okay, cool. But gradually, people kept telling me it was very dangerous, and I was like, can the Rabobon be that dangerous, bro? I did hear specifically about Herbertstrasse, right? And you go behind the wall and you film at all, bro. Well, let's just say you gonna get lit up. All right, now, initially, when I think of Germany, right, I think of a very conservative, very locked down culture, play by the rules kind of thing. It didn't feel like that when I was on the Rapabon. The Rapabon felt like a rift in the entire culture, a portal, you know? You, you hop through this portal and it was wild, bro. Absolutely wild. I got to go to the Ritza and you know, it's where Jesus hangs out. This is the famous spot in Hamburg. It's a famous, famous bar. Everybody was here, like Tyson, Muhammad Ali, like the Klitschko's. Everybody was boxing, was boxing here. Tupac, don't was here. <laughs> and a bunch of the uh, Einzog Sieben crew and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, this is really the Ritza. Like, that's crazy. I was scared to go inside. So I was just like, man, a whole lot of wild stuff. But I didn't understand the level of how free this area was. And it kind of like I said, changed my entire outlook on Germany as a whole, because I thought for the most part, Germany was pretty conservative about certain things. Of course, not really nudity, but most things to an extent. And then I saw the Rapabon. A big question that crossed my mind is how are people okay with prostitution? Because I will say this, a lot of the people that were going inside those houses, those uh, intercourse houses were old men, old men. Bro, like in their 50s and up, right? That were going in there and stuff, actually looking for something it looked like. And like, I would see some of these same people at different spots. And I was like, oh my God. Now I know you guys are probably like, what were you doing over there? I wanted to see what everybody was talking about. Like there's this big pink building that says sex house. And I'm like, oh my, <laughs> they just have it right out there, bro. And it's like six stories of just wild stuff, as you could imagine. As far as safety goes, I had this this image in my head that Germany was like incredibly safe. You know, obviously nothing, not nothing, but the likelihood of anything crazy happening would be slim. Until I went to the Rapabon and I got a bunch of messages from a lot of you guys saying, hey, be careful, it can get very dangerous at night when everybody's drinking and you know, there's a lot of wild activities t taking place. And I'm like, really? Over here? What? Really? So I was like, okay, well obviously Germany is a very safe country in comparison to America, but it definitely has its moments. You know what I'm saying? It has its moments. And you guys know me, I'm from Chicago, so it takes a lot for me to feel uncomfortable. I wasn't even uncomfortable. I was just kind of on alert for the first time because I was like, oh, something can happen here? Okay, well, shit. Like, let me just keep my guard up a little bit, I guess. I had an interesting comment in my YouTube comments that I read recently. I'm from Hamburg, and while I like to see how much you enjoy the city, this video also makes me sad. Just one 
day after this video was published, I read the news that the Molotov, one of Hamburg's most important subculture music clubs, will be terminated next summer because at its place at the Raperbahn, there will be a new luxury hotel that'll be built. Last summer, the ferry you took was also so overloaded, people who actually had to go to work with it were left behind. Hamburg is suffering badly from the over-tourism and the subculture even more. I don't say don't come to Hamburg for a visit, but always have in mind what tourism does to the city you visit. Elbphilharmony or musicals aren't Hamburg, but the small clubs are. Don't be a Jack Wolfskin wearing German tourist and come to Hamburg only to visit the tourist places, but go to the small clubs and help the subculture out here survive. And I respect that because actually one of the things that I did, I went live on my Instagram and I actually said, hey, if anybody wants to hang out, me and my friends are on the Rehoboban. If you guys want to hang out with us, just come meet us up there. We'll party it up. So actually a lot of you guys took me to some really cool like underground bars. They were just like really chill bars. There was this one bar I went to. They had like a foosball table in there. Um, I'm not sure if you guys call it a foosball table. We call it a foosball table, but I don't know what you guys call it. They had a foosball table. We were drinking and then um, went to a different bar and it was really chill. Went to a club and it was like everybody was like super dope, but very open, very free, very kind and stuff like that. I loved it. It was a very good time and it wasn't any of the main poppin' club that everybody was funneling into because to be fair, they were very crowded. There was a line trailing outside of the buildings. So I was like, oh my God. But it was very interesting for me because everything is better at night there. Everything's better at night. I mean, it looked incredible. There were so many people out. I had a great time. Now, this is the, the story that you're probably waiting on and it's what is behind the wall. So a friend and I decided, my friend's already been behind the wall before and he's like, hey, wait, but he went with his friends and stuff because he didn't know what was behind there. So he wanted to show me what was behind the wall. He's like, hey, listen, like you have to go up and down the street at least just one time on Herbertstrasse. So we go there, we enter the wall and I'm telling you, dude, the Rebelbahn is loud. It's super loud. There's a ton of people, everyone's partying, drinking. Some people get very belligerent at past a certain time because everybody by that point is already really drunk and it's it's overwhelming. But the second you step through those walls, it's quiet. It's quiet, bro. It's not like you're entering a building, you're entering a street and it's quiet. I was more shocked with how the setup was because when you walked by, it was like each girl was in the window sitting on like a high chair. And all, you know those chairs that people sit in to get their hair cut at a barber shop? They were sitting in like one of those. And basically it was like watching like a bunch of OnlyFans models sitting in these big glass like boxes doing their hair or on their phones and kind of just waiting for people to come up and talk to them. And now if they saw somebody that caught their eye, they would open up a window and they would yell at them and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. There is this one section of the street that has like this, I think it's like a bar or something. I think it's, it's either, I think it has to be a bar. That's what I was told, it's like a bar. And I think people go in there. I didn't go in there at all, but people go in there and stuff. They talk to some of the people that were in the windows and then I guess they start talking pricing and all this other stuff. And then once they come to an agreement, they do their thing. One trick I heard is when you go to the bar, they'll talk to maybe one of the bartenders or whoever's serving you drinks and they give you drinks and they're free drinks until you refuse to make an agreement with one of the women and sleep with them and stuff like that. And apparently they charge you a ridiculous price for the free drinks that you were given. Cause they make it seem like the drinks are free. And they're like, oh, that'll be 300 euro bitte. <laughs> Some crazy price. And if you refuse to pay, well, you better have a way to make it out of that thing alive because good googly moogly. I was absolutely shocked with how quiet it was and the intensity that that area brought because it was like stepping through an entirely different world. When I walked through those walls and it was everybody observing everybody, you could tell which, which women that were there had work done a little bit and whatnot. I mean, that's their profession and stuff. Some women in there look nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Some look like, you know, hey, just another, another day at the office and stuff like that, you know? And it was just crazy. I turn around, we walk back, and on the way out, one of the uh, women in the glass like shouts out, she's like, oh, I think I know you. And like, she points to my headband. And I was like, oh, we need to get out of here. And uh, I peaced out. So it was a wild experience, dude, wild experience. Like, and I guess I have a few questions. My first question is, how do you guys feel about the purchasing of intercourse in Germany. That's the most monetizable way I can say that. How do you guys feel about like that street in general? Because that street is very intense. I liked it. I had a good time. What would you recommend for anybody visiting the Rehoboth for the first time or even another time? Like there's so many other things I think I could have done in that night, but 
We only had basically a night to do that because we had we were all over the place. It's a crazy street. Also, I did hear that there's still like pimps and stuff like that, which made me wonder like there's not corporations running these like prostitution rings. Like what's going on? I had a lot of questions, a lot of questions. I don't know how it really works or anything. I just know what I was told as I was shown these places. So fill me in in the comments down below. Absolutely wild. I'm sorry I didn't have more footage, but we didn't want to get wrapped up in any wild shit. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.